electric cars are all very worthy, but by and large, they tend to lack any kind of want one factor. Here's one though, that you might really covet, the Honda E. Because it's very small and doesn't go particularly far on a single charge, it's very much an urban town runabout. But what a cool one to have. Almost everything about this car is different, including the way it's been engineered. Uh, drive is from the back, not from the front. There's a DC electric motor, not an AC one, and it sits under the boot floor, not under the bonnet. Even the wheels are of a contrary design. The rims are staggered in width, uh, like they are on Honda's NSX supercar. They're half an inch narrower at the front than at the rear. And in keeping with that, uh, there is the kind of perfect dynamic 50-50 weight distribution, which is uh, normally foreign to most other EVs. All of this we think you'll like, even the curious electric motor placement, which decimates boot space but makes possible a tiny London taxi-like 4.3 metre turning radius. The differentiation point that we think you'll be less happy with is Honda's decision to go against the grain when it comes to battery size and not to prioritise here the thing that most EV customers do prioritise, uh, driving range. You can't give a car like this a heavy or steel structure and a resulting one and a half tonne curb weight and then give it a little 35.5 kilowatt hour battery and expect it to go very far on a single charge and it doesn't. The official WLTP figure is up to 100 137 miles, but in the real world, well, you get sweaty palms just trying to reach three figures. Still, there are lots of compensations, light, quick steering, great cornering body control, a brilliantly supple quality of ride, uh, thanks to the all-independent suspension, and the novelty of Honda's side mirror camera system, which replaces the conventional door mirrors with six-inch color screens that sit at either end of the dash. Switch out of the normal drive mode into the alternative sport setting, which further decimates the range, and there's an appropriate bit of zip to go with all this, especially up to 30 miles an hour and particularly if you choose this top advanced variant with its 154 PS electric motor and that makes 60 in uh, 8.3 seconds. That's 7 tenths faster than the base spec version which uses the same motor in detuned 136 PS form. And the battery's tiny size means it's quick to charge too. I uh, think 4.1 hours from a 6.6 .6 kilowatt home or public AC charger or just 31 minutes for 80% replenishment from a DCS2 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. With a typical electricity tariff, you'd be paying around 4p per mile to run this electric model. And that's uh, around two and a half to six times cheaper than an equivalent car with a petrol or diesel engine. Lots to like then. Rarely have we ever tested a car that looked quite so much like a motor show concept. Not everyone will like the look of this Honda E, but there's certainly nothing like it on the road. Where to start? Uh, with the bonnet perhaps, it being here rather than in the front or rear wing, that the charging flap's located beneath a classy glass cover that conceals the smartly illuminated sockets. Above it, this panoramic windscreen blends into the A-pillars and the side windows, uh, but your attention will be rather more taken by what lies below. Black panels with unique concave profiles. They're one of this car's defining style motifs, particularly here at the front end, where this feature is flanked by cute circular front headlights, which uh, designer Ken Sahara says help to define the human face of the car, emphasizing its simple, clean design. Uh, the shaping is one of the two things that pay homage to the model uh, with which Honda pioneered its presence in the small car segment, uh, the 1972 era Civic. The other is this gently scalloped detail line that runs across the flank and up to the C pillar, framing the glass house and adding a sense of depth to the smooth surfacing. Oh yes, uh, smooth surfaces, uh, they're another styling theme here with almost nothing allowed to spoil the clean flush finishing, not front door handles which only pop out proud of the panel work as you approach the car, uh, no roof edge rain gutters, the aerodynamics doesn't require them, uh, you don't even get door mirrors 
cameras. Uh, these have been replaced by a clever side mirror camera system working via tiny lenses housed in these little brackets attached where the mirrors would normally be. Now they uh, eliminate the need for channel lines to divert airflow and rainwater away from the sides of the car. Uh, the stuff you can't see deserves equal recognition. Uh, you would expect uh, simply a repackaged version of the front driven chassis that underpins this car's Jazz Hybrid Showroom Stablemate. Instead, what you actually get is a completely different steel platform uh, which brakes with small EV convention by sighting the electric motor at the back where unusually for a compact battery powered model, it drives the rear wheels more conventionally, the power electronics and the onboard charger sit at the front and the lithium ion battery pack sits beneath the cabin floor. Uh, the main determinant in creating the portly curb weight of at least 1,513 kilos. And if you thought there was lots to talk about outside, wait until you take a seat in the cabin. Inside, you're greeted by an interior that'll be unlike anything you've ever sat in. Designed under stylist Akinori Miui, it's open plan and avant-garde with soft, flat seats that you perch quite high on and which are upholstered with the kind of fabric you might find on a chic high-end sofa. Most eye-catching, though, is the way that this full-width digital dashboard incorporates more screens than you'd find in a computer hacker's bedroom, there being no fewer than five of them. The instrument binnacle has one, of course, a rather cluttered 8.8-inch monitor replacing the conventional dials, and at either end of the dash lie six-inch monitors relaying images from the SMCS, the side mirror camera system we mentioned earlier. In between are two 12.3-inch screens, uh, rectangular in shape, uh, joined at the centre of the fascia, with features that you can switch between monitors, uh, which can deliver way more than the usual infotainment features, and which can play movies, etc gaming console attachment and even show a calming aquarium. Uh, we think though you're less likely to appreciate these light wood uh, artificial inlays. They seem like an odd trimming choice in such a futuristic car but at least everything's light and airy. Uh, the generous wheelbase facilitates far more interior space than you'd ever think would be possible from the diminutive exterior dimensions. Uh, the ambiance is embellished by light materials, uh, by big windows, a standard fit sunroof and the deletion of the usual transmission tunnel which uh, creates this large flat area between the front footwells. What about the rear? Can it really replicate the relatively spacious field delivered up front? To some extent, yes. Uh, this sofa-like seating actually looks like a sofa here, although not a particularly inviting one, uh, more the kind of thing you'd find in a student's loft apartment. Because of the battery pack beneath the floor, this bench can't do anything clever like it can in this model's Jazz showroom stablemate, where the base lifts up cinema seat style. Uh, it is also disappointing that you can only seat two back here, particularly as the virtual absence of a central transmission tunnel means that space for a third person would be possible at a pinch uh, if a belt had been provided for them. Finally, let's take a look out back. Uh, okay, so you can't expect too much in terms of boot space from a car just 3.9 metres in length, but we'd hope for a bit more than this, uh, 171 litres. With everything folded, 861 litres of capacity is on offer if you load up to the roof, or 571 litres if you load to the window line. Those figures are about a third less than is offered by the Jazz model we just mentioned. This car, according to Honda, represents the start of its electrification journey. It is a rather late start until quite recently when other brands were fully into EV development. This Japanese maker was still convinced that hybrids were the only solution until hydrogen fuel cell vehicles got going. But the quick about turn that brought us the uh, sports EV concept and then this Honda E production model forced the brand to be radical. We can't help liking this end result. This Honda though, it's different. It's modern yet memorable, both inside and out. And little touches like the clever fascia screens and the virtual door mirrors provide the required cutting edge feel that early adopters of technology tend to like. 
It'll be a rare choice, uh, chosen by folk who love its bijou distinctive packaging so much that they're happy to pay more for a car that they won't actually be able to travel in quite as far as they might like. Uh, the parameters governing its development, electrification, automation and connected services, uh, they seem cold and uninviting. The end product though is anything but. If you like it, you'll love it. If you don't, then simply admire here the kind of innovation that any trend-setting Honda really ought to have. Decades ahead, when other current small EVs have been long forgotten, this one will be cherished by the few loyal to it. It's a special little car. <laughs>